If I'm standing where you are today, I would look at myself and think, who is she? What is she here to tell me? And what on earth could she say that I don't already know? <laughs> and the answer is probably nothing. I'm here today to share three stories that make a reality. A reality that's the reason I am here today. When I was 17 years old, I lost one of the most important people in my life, my father and best friend. And it's not just the kind of best friend that you just give the title to, but the kind of best friend who actually deserves the name. We were bonded by so much love, care, appreciation, and a common ground that grew with every year. We shared an understanding that made our bond so deep that with his loss, my grief was far beyond the kind of grief to just feel and let go of, but the kind that's so deep and rooted that's difficult to move on from. From that point, my body started reacting in ways that I completely did not get. I would get fits of hyperventilation, nervousness. I would reach to my toes in the middle of the night to check if my toes were getting cold, thinking I was actually dying. At the time, I did not know what was happening. I could not comprehend it. And after months of tests trying to figure out the physical reason why this was going on, I remember sitting in a very white, cold space in front of a very composed American lady who simply smiled and said, Mariam, you have anxiety. And just for a moment, everything stood still. Everything I felt, all the confusion, was all under just one title. Other people went through with it. There were symptoms. There, there were symptoms, and there were coping mechanisms that other people have gone through as well. From there, I started going to therapy, started speaking about my childhood, my experiences, and where this rooted from. And then, at that time, I realized that another reason for my anxiety was a long history of a problem with my body image. Ever since I was young, I was told that if I had lost weight, I would be happier, better, everything in my life would be easier. And this thought kept growing up with me year by year. If I aged a year with every birthday, it aged five. I would walk around feeling like I carry a shadow that just told me every single day, if you do not change that digit on the, on the scale, your life is doomed. Everything you, all your ambitions, all your dreams, something is going to, ha to, to, ha to tamper with them. I remember the very first time I walked into a dietitian's office when I was 13. I felt like everyone in the room knew I was, I was uncomfortable with who I was. I wasn't happy with who I was or how I looked. It always felt like I walking with this huge sign that said, you're fat. And all I wanted at the time, I did not any, want anyone to see me walking to that building as if if they saw me there, they would realize the reality. But actually, I knew that behind my back and in front of me, everyone saw that more than anything. So where does this take you? Because I'm definitely not sharing with you these three very positive parts of my life just to share what I've went through. But where does this take you? I would like to ask a question before I tell you how does this concern you. Can I get a show of hands for him? How many people have had their hearts broken before? Okay. I'd like to assume that a lot of you have thought of a heartbreak that was related to the opposite gender. A breakup, a relationship that went wrong. But is this the only kind of heartbreak we go through? If you Google it, heartbreak's definition is overwhelming distress. So when we define it this way, can I get another show of hands of how many people have felt that? Okay. So we're all, we all think that a heartbreak has to be related to the relationships we have. But sometimes our heartbreaks are, different, are more dif bigger and different than that. According to the National Center of Biotechnology Information, our minds are wired to, to, to react to emotional pain the same way they react to physical pain. And that your heartbreak could have symptoms that are very much similar to a heart attack. So you could have extreme chest pain, arm pain, you could have a lot of breathing problems just due to that, to that kind of stress. The left ventricle of your heart could be paralyzed for a period of time. So 
my father's loss was a heartbreak. Dealing with anxiety was a heartbreak. And being overweight was a daily heartbreak. But how come do some people treat their heartbreaks in ways and others treat with them in another way? How come people grow from their trauma, evolve and shine, and others go into deep darkness? How come did Michael Jordan get cut out from his, his high school basketball team to being the greatest player of all time? Or J.K. Rowling being broke, heartbroken 12 times every time Harry Potter was refused until the Philosopher's Stone came out? And this is why I'm coming here to tell you today. I found three steps that could all break, but break solidly. Because if we're all bound to get heartbroken at some point, then we should do it solidly. So step number one, you need to define your pain. For the longest time, my mind was telling me that my pain after losing my father had to take some time and then leave. I had to feel it, get over it, and move on. But my heart felt something different, and I did not know it. Unconsciously, a part of me felt that because we were so bonded, that with his death, a part of me has died as well. A part of my ambition, a part of my happiness, all my potential, just went. So a part of me just wanted everything to stay still because he wasn't there anymore. And this is why my, my problem with dealing with my father's death isn't just the normal part of grief where you miss someone, it's feeling that you cannot survive with them, without them. According to a study be, uh, done in the uh, University of North Carolina, defining and naming your emotional feelings help you deal with the anxiety related to them, help you make a connection between your thoughts and feelings, and find coping mechanisms to deal with them. So you need to define your pain, because if you do not meet something, you can't deal with it. If you, if you want to mend your heart, you can't give your back to it. So step number one, define your pain, and don't let anyone make you underestimate it, because for the longest time, I told myself, you lost your father when you were 17. Other people lose both their parents when they're two. But feeling empathy for others does not undermine the kind of pain you feel. So step number one, you define your pain. Step number two, you have to live it. And I'm not promoting the kind of life where you overwhelm yourself with everything bad you're feeling and just keep thinking about it and repeating it in your head but you need to know what you're dealing with. Ever since I was so young, I was, I was thrown with the idea, Mariam, you need to lose weight, you need to change how you look, something about you needs a change. And being stuck in between trying to make that change happen and not knowing why was a very big struggle. I always knew there was something that I had to do. I just did not know why I had to do it until I suddenly stopped. 91% of women have a problem with body image and trying to reach their ideal weight or body look. One third of people who say they are on normal diets are going to be in pathological, doing pathological diets at some point. 95% of people with, with the eating disorders are between the ages of 12 and 25. These numbers are scary, but it's a universal problem that I thought I was in alone, that I was trying to run away from being a victim of my own thoughts and the thoughts thrown at me. Until I decided, you're not going to do anything about it. You're not going to lose weight. You're not going to train until you know why you're doing it. Is it because you want more boys to like you? Is it because the Zora jeans are just too tight? Or is it because there's another reason that you want this? And only when I found the reason, and only when I found that there was something in me that just wanted this kind of change, I was able to make my own choices. And even then, people had to say about how I lost the weight, not just if I lose it or not. So when I said I was going to go to weight loss surgery, a lot of people were like, you're taking the easy way out. But just because I was motivated by the right reason, I've done it anyway. I've had the surgery. I've worked out so hard, and I've lost 50 kilograms. And it's not about the number, or the change, or the achievement. It's about only when you're motivated by the right reasons to do a specific change, you actually can do it. 
So if I did not live my pain, if I did not accept it, understand it, and see where I want to go from it, I would have never been able to do that. Step number three is fall in love with your pain. And as absurd and bizarre as this sounds, a couple of years ago I thought, what if you had to stand in front of a group of people and pitch that the worst heartbreaks are the best thing that you've ever gone through, and then decided to write a book about that. So this means I need to stand here today and tell you that losing my father was amazing, or that dealing with anxiety was the best thing I've ever gone through, or that being overweight was an experience of a lifetime. And knowing every single thing I've went through, this gives me a pinch of the heart to say out loud. But the real, re but the real reality is, Losing my father made me a very emotionally independent person. Dealing with anxiety helped me find my voice through my passion of writing. It helped me find the power of vulnerability and self-awareness. It made me open up to people that I've never seen before on so many different platforms and have them share their experiences with me as well. So this is just not, again, about what I did or where I took my heartbreaks to because we're all going through, to go through similar experiences, whether it was loss, bullying, different problems that we all face and different heartbreaks that we will all eventually go through. It's about how you deal with them. So step number one, define your pain and don't let anyone underestimate it. Step number two, live your pain and don't ever run away from it. Step number three, fall in love with your pain. Stand in the mirror, look for that pitch, and if you haven't found it, keep looking, because only, this is, only these are the way that you could break solidly. Thank you.